Hello everyone, this is Finn from Robotics in a nutshell, and today I want to talk about a little tool that I've created for you, which could make life for you a little bit easier. So this tool aims at those of you guys who work with embedded systems, and I think in robotics you do that quite a lot. And what its objective is, is to make finding pins on a microcontroller a little bit easier. So usually when you have a new microcontroller and you want to connect, for example, an SPI connection, or you want to power the LED and make it blink, stuff like that, uh, you might go to Google and then you search for the pinout, uh, click on images, and then you can find like these uh, pinout tables here, like the, the graphs that show you where each of the different pins and its functionality are located. And, um, you know, these are quite extensive and can be quite useful, but for me it always felt like this could be done a little bit easier and uh, in a way more convenient way where you can, for example, search inside of these pins. And you can also get a better feeling of where they are located on the microcontroller. So what I've created is this tool that I call the Pin Finder. And basically it's a way to interact more conveniently and easily with the pinout of a microcontroller and also provide like some helping functionality to more easily find the pin on the actual Mac controller that you have in front of you. So I think the easiest way for me to show you how it actually works is to just give you an example. So here we have this list of Mac controllers, and you know I try to extend this list all the time, but currently we have these Mac controllers, and you can also search in them uh, in here. And uh, let's say you have this Nucleo F113ZH, then you can uh, choose it here. And this will open this view for you. And here you can see basically how the mic controller looks like. So um, you have this uh, view here of the mic controller. And this is also how the mic controller looks in real life, as you can see here. And in this view now, you can see the different headers of the mic controller. And uh, you know you can see the different pin names here, but you can also click on them, and then it will show you a list of the different functionality of this pin. So, for example, this uh, uh, let's go with uh, this PD2 pin here. Uh, so it's called PD2, but it also has a different name called D48, and it has the UART5 RX line on top of it. And uh, you can do that with all of these headers here, and you can. Um, and this way basically get an overview of the different functionality of each pin. So this is pretty similar to these kind of lists that I've uh, shown you before. But um, this is not the only thing that you can do. So for example, uh, let's say you want to find a certain pin. Let's say you want to find this PD4 pin on this huge array of pins. So uh, you can just go here in the top into this search bar and you can just type it in PD4. And this will then highlight this pin here in red. And as you can see now, which, uh, a thing that you might have not noticed before is that the PD4 pin is also available on this header here. And, you know, I think this is quite convenient to have this ability to just search for a pin and um, you can basically immediately find it without having to scroll through all these pinouts and uh, looking for it. And, uh, you know, if you have a different pin, that's uh, let's say you want to find where's ground, uh, then you can just search for ground and it will show you everywhere where you can find a ground pin. And another thing that's also quite important, I think, uh, you know, here you can see the, the chip in this kind of configuration. Uh, you know, this um, these two buttons here are at the bottom and um, it's located on the side. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you, you turn your chip around and because maybe of different cabling, um, you cannot turn it anymore. So uh, because of that, uh, I think it's important that you can turn the chip around so that you can locate it in the same way as it's orientated on your desk. And I think it's also quite important that you can uh, actually turn it around. So now we can see the backside of the chip. And um, also to provide some visual hints, uh, you can see uh, that the pin headers have changed. So. Uh, if I scroll in here, uh, you can see that these are male pins. Uh, but if I turn it around, then you can see that uh, now it's female pins. So um, in this way, you can also make sure that you have the right orientation and the right side. Uh, also a thing that's uh, kind of related to how you operate with these things in uh, real life. 
So uh, let's say you want to uh, connect a cable to this PB7 pin. Then uh, usually in these tables here, you would find your PB7 pin and then you would need to count like one, two, three, four, five to basically find out uh, which of these pins do I actually have to connect on my real microcontroller. And uh, when you do this kind of counting, you easily make a mistake. And because of that, I have these uh, small counters here. And, um, you know, they will immediately tell you that this is the 11th pin on this header here. And, uh, you know, sometimes if you have such a long header, it's more convenient to count from the bottom because, you know, if you have to count from here, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then you had like 24 down here, um, or, or actually here, uh, then it's... Um, you know, you can easily make a mistake when you count this on your actual mic controller. And um, so often it's more useful to count from the bottom. But now you would need to calculate, you know, now you can see like 27 and 62. So that doesn't help you much. So uh, up here you can inverse the counters. You now you can see, for example, this PF8 pin is the ninth pin from the bottom. And similarly, uh, this PF9 is also the ninth pin from the bottom, but just on the left side, of course. Yeah, and uh, another thing that I also think is kind of interesting, uh, you know, if you want to search, for example, the CAN bus, you want to connect uh, some kind of CAN, uh, then you can uh, activate the fuzzy search here, and that will um, match not only if you type on the perfect name, but if you basically type out a part of the string that you are searching for. So for example, if I type in can now, I will see all the different can connections. And, um, you know, I can actually uh, enable the can um, name set here. And you can see that it matches all the cans. Um, but let's say I'm, I know that I want to use can2. Then I can type can2 in here. And uh, you can see now that we can see the different can2 connections. And yeah, I think that also makes life a little bit easier. Um, you have to be a bit careful with this uh, because of the fuzzy search. Uh, you know, for example, if I search for SPI here, uh, then you can see it matches the SPI name set, but there are also these fields here, which are red, and, you know, you can't see any SPI here. Uh, and that's because this is actually QSPI. So the fuzzy search will match whenever, like, a part of the string here is in there. Um, and also it will match, you know, if you type, for example, SPI, and then you type a zero, this will still match this here, because the string basically contains this SPI zero in the QSPI underscore D zero. So just be aware of how the fuzzy search operates um, so that you don't get confused. Um, another way to make this a little bit easier is that you can limit the search just to the current name set that you have activated uh, down here. So for example, if I now go to SPI and I have search for SPI, that will really only match anything that's located in this very namespace and nothing in the QSPI namespace. Um, okay, and next to that we also have some other functionality. So if you scroll down here, you can um, see that we can put in uh, CSV data or in the case of SCM microcontrollers, you can also input uh, Cupermix data that you can export, uh, which is basically also CSV. So um, what you can do is um, you can provide a name label mapping here and uh, you have to provide it in this following form. So you have a name and label and then you provide the name of your pin. So uh, let's say, for example, we have this uh, PG11 pin here. And then we give it some kind of label. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can activate the pinout here and then you can see that we can type on tape in the label. So let's say this is, um, this PG11 pin is for my motor a, a PWM signal. So I put in this label here and now it's also displayed here. And, uh, you know, you can put in multiple pins. So you can also do PD9 and then, uh, you know, this might be motor a direction just something that's really specific to your project, you know. And um, as I said before, you can also combine this with Cupermix. 
So let's say you have a certain uh, project and you have a lot of custom pins. Uh, you know, you can see here you have like, for example, also some motor pins or some external flash, some light switches, whatever. Uh, you can go here to um, pin out and export the, the pin out basically. Uh, so I would just uh, type this in here, F413 pinout, and uh, this will create a CSV file for you. And you can open this with the text editor, just copy it, and put it in here. And this will now display all the things that you have set up in your project uh, in here. So you can see, for example, here's motor D, PWM, WAF2 open, and so on. So this will make it really easy if you have a complex setup that you want to connect to a microcontroller to find out where you have to connect everything. Um, now, you can also see that it will display you which pins that actually found here. So let's say you have something set up here that is that it uh, cannot find here, then um, it will tell you that. So for example, these pins, they had like a really specific name, for example, this oscillator 32 out, um, this is not the actual name, so um, it, it will probably just find it if you call it PC15. And so that you don't miss anything, uh, it will tell you here which pins it couldn't find. Um, in case you want to print this, for example, you can also find each header on its own. Um, so you can see the search and so on, it also works down here. So for example, if I type now PC8, uh, you can see that it also displays this down here and you can find all the headers with all the pinouts down here now you might look at the collection of microcontrollers that we have and you might notice that your microcontroller is not on this list uh, so what can you do then um, you are actually able to upload your own layout here uh, so you can choose front image um, i have just downloaded the SVGs from the Arduino Uno that I've created myself here. Uh, so I will just reuse them here. Uh, so you can upload a front and a back image. Uh, you can also use PNGs, for example. And uh, then you have to provide a JSON file in which you describe the pins. I've provided a sample here for you, as so you can find out what's the structure of the JSON file. Um, I will not go into detail here, like how to set up up directly uh, you can see here i have some hints placed for you and you can uh, read through this and understand um, how it works uh, so you you place the um, json in here and then you click on insert and that will insert this new mic controller into this list here if you scroll down all the way you can find your custom layout here and um, if you then go down you can see that it was inserted and that it now has these pins here. Everything works just the same way as before. So you can search this. Yeah, basically you have the same functionality. Uh, these pins right here, of course, they are not located correctly right now and they don't really make sense. But, uh, you know, if you set it up correctly and you place the pins at the right spot, then you can create your own custom mic controller. Now, at some point, I also want to enable people to actually uh, upload layouts or at least suggest layouts um, to be added to this kind of official list. So I'm thinking about maybe making parts of the software open source and then letting people open merge requests so that we can extend this list. You know, I think it would be pretty cool if we as a community uh, could kind of bond together and create all the different microcontrollers and, you know, extend the ones that are already present. Uh, because, you know, it's uh, quite a lot of work and I think everyone would benefit from this if we uh, could make this list really large so that everything is covered. Um, now, if you have any more questions, there are also like a lot of hints here. Uh, so, for example, uh, the, the hints about the different parts of the JSON file, but also here um, some search hints and at the bottom you will find also some hints um, like some some example CSV data here, uh, you can also find uh, uh, like a small introduction into how to export the data from, from Kubemix. And yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it. 
Um, I hope you find this interesting. Uh, I definitely have used it uh, quite a lot before, and I also know of some colleagues of mine that use it. You can find the link to the website that the tool is hosted on in the description. Uh, you can find it also here on screen, and um, yeah, you can check it out, and I'll see you then. Bye.